Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. You know, this is a group of people we've been working for years trying to teach orthodontics to pediatric dentists and general dentists and uh, also we're trying to work in dentists that do restorative dentistry. We try to restore people, whether they're young people or older people, with orthodontics rather than putting implants or bridges or something in there. If we can move the teeth from the back to the front and use wisdom teeth and second molars, if they're still good, and fill in the place where the six-year molar was. But I want to go in this morning and talk about what we call serial extraction. And these are cases where there's absolutely no orthodontic stuff on these cases. And let me show you what can be done and why under God's heaven that we're not teaching that in our orthodontic schools and in our schools where we teach serial, I mean, teach pediatric dentists, they're not teaching them how to do this. At least that's the, what I get from information of the pediatric dentist. And I've worked with pediatric dentists, and we have a whole group of pediatric dentists in the AOS. Now, if you don't get it taught in school, we can teach you in the AOS, and that's uh, that's in the United States, and we're trying to get uh, programs out where people anywhere in the world can teach these things. And I'm going to show you some cases we did with no orthodontic uh, braces of any kind on their mouth. So let's get started on this, and I, I'm I just get really tore up when I think about they're not teaching this and I've been trying for 40 years to get this across to people so let's get going here I'll have to poke a few buttons here now here's a young lady who is the daughter of a pastor and they had very limited income anything else uh, here to do this and I, I took her and started out there. This is after she's finished, but I'm going to show you after she gets 28 years old or something. I think I've got it that far down the line. And uh, if you think it's not her, then look at that little uh, dark spot in the uh, front central there, and you can see it all the way through the case. Uh, okay, we use the reduction case where we go and reduce deciduous teeth and do the pulpotomies on them. And this is another thing. It ought to be taught to every dentist that's messing with kids, anything like that. Show them how to do these pulpotomies and watch what we put nothing in there except the force of the tongue right up here coming out where it's swallowing correctly, chewing correctly, breathing through the nose, keeping the mouth closed, stuff like this. And when you swallow, the tongue pushes out and the cheeks and the lips hold the teeth back and the teeth line up in the area right here. And I don't give a darn what type of cephalometric stuff you use. The best thing in the world is what's happening in that particular person's mouth. And so that's going to push these teeth into this place. Nobody's teeth come in in the right spot. They get pushed in there if there's room enough for them to get into place. So let's watch this. We go in and do these pump on them, and when you do them, if you haven't taken it off, this tooth will be dead on the inside, but the outside is still alive. And these are deciduous teeth now, healthy deciduous teeth. And I think I've done over a thousand of those things and never had one of them blow up. And they don't use a, a rubber dam on there. You can't put a rubber dam down there. You go, go down and cut around that tooth 
and, and free it up and watch what happens in here. All right, here it is, uh, 4 of 71, and we did that reduction, and just the teeth coming into the mouth, and the force of the tongue pushed these teeth out where they were right here. They didn't come in straight. Look where these teeth are curved over like this. They come up in here, and you've gotten this cut out, and you give it enough room to turn to straighten that tooth out, and the tongue pushes it in place, and the lips catch it on one side here, and the tongue pushes on it on the other side, and it straightens the tooth out. Nothing else was need, used at all in doing this. And why in the devil this is not taught to everybody who works on any kids? They ought to know how to do this. And so many people's teeth could be brought in and it wouldn't be much of anything. If you need to touch them up with orthodontics later on, all right. And follow this. This is that age defect in that tooth. This is the same girl all the way through. I don't I try to cover up a thing here. Now we got a big gap in between the teeth and we didn't do any reduction of that. The, the tongue and the lips push those teeth together and the erupting laterals moved in there. We have to go up and do the same thing on the upper. I don't think I, I show the, the actual reduction of the teeth. But here the uppers are like that. This is 471. And then here it is, uh, 73. We see this person. Look what happened to these teeth right in here. They're lined up. They, you could hardly get them any better than this. You could line it up a little bit better. They have taken up the room every bit that we gave them. The tongue is pushing from the inside. The lips are holding it from the outside. Why can't people be taught this? That's what bugs the heck out of me. Why can't they be taught this? And the pediatric dentist, whoever is heading up the pediatric dental society, the people that pull the, that really make the decisions, they won't even let the American Orthodontic Society come in and speak at their annual meetings. They don't want anybody to be taught any orthodontics, just, just pediatric dentistry. And you need to know the orthodontics to know what to do with you. Pediatric dentistry. All right, let's watch that. I don't want to get too hecked off at uh, the pediatric department, but that just <laughs> gets me. I've talked to some of our good pediatric dentists, and they say they just can't get anything done. They won't even let you come up and speak at our annual meeting. Who in the devil is is making these decisions. All right, now we cut those teeth down or we do a, a reduction with a, we've gone through many cases with that, showing you how to do it. Now, so that's a deciduous cuspid tooth reduced right there. All right, here we're gonna go through the x-rays now from one end to the other. So we've got a cuspid tooth coming in right on top of the of a lateral, a permanent lateral and a permanent cuspid coming in right up there. I'll erase that so you can see it a little better. Let me get the right button here. Now, you see that cuspid coming down here. Now, we know we don't have enough room for these teeth to come in. Uh, the parents and the people that, I mean, there's just not enough room for this to come in. So we're going to, to get this tooth to come off of this root, it'll come in on top of it if you leave it alone. So we come in and take out the cuspid, the first bicuspids. Here's the cuspid coming in here, and you're going to have this two teeth that you're going to get between these two right here. So we remove those teeth in this particular case. And we remove them over here. Now watch where this tooth 
this tooth is running into this lateral. Watch what happens. And I call this follicular movement of the teeth. I don't haven't read anything. I've not published that or anything. But follicular movement, the tooth is in a bag of more of water, more or less, right in there. And it, if you leave it alone, sometimes these called follicular cysts develop that swells up. Now when I take this away on this side, this follicle is going to shove that tooth in that direction. You can learn that. Anybody can learn how to do that. If you're messing with kids, you ought to know how you can do that. This follicle around this one will shove this one over in this direction too. Now down on the bottom, these teeth will come in and they'll come away from there. We'll take this, in other words, you take some off of one side, this bag of water will push this tooth over and without touching it. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to erase all of that and let you see it. Now here this is 8 of 73. We've got come back and we took a panorex again on this 3 of 74. So that's about 9 months. I don't know how many months is this. It's not too long. But look where this tooth has moved. It was way over here. Look at this tooth completely off of it. I'm going to go back and look at that again. Now, see where that, look where this tooth is up here. And this one, now watch those teeth move off of there. Now, see, this one is almost away. We've not touched them with anything except use your head and see what this bag of water that's around the tooth we call a follicle and you mash it on one side if you take the pressure pressure off on the other side the tooth will move over there without ever touching it without ever touching it now they did the same thing down on the bottom uh, to it pulls them away all right here we come now this is seven of seventy five now we've done, this is, this takes several years to do. So there's hardly any, I don't know of any orthodontic school that's teaching people how to do stuff like this. It takes several years to watch it, but you're doing nothing but taking some pictures of it and maybe reducing some deciduous teeth. This will work out. Now this is gone for this point. Now look where this tooth is, and this tooth is, and this one, and this one around here. And all this time this is drifting in from the back, filling in the space. You'll have a little extra space in here. All right, that's from 775. Let's go to 10 of 77. So this was several years we've been watching this case, doing nothing but ex shaving the teeth down and taking the pulps out of these teeth that we leave in there for a while and look at how the teeth are coming. Now this this young lady's got four bad cavities and if, if we had to lose these teeth we could take this tooth, we'd move this one over and this one come down and fill that in. And that's not taught either. That jump uh, in other words, there are people that would extract the wisdom tooth and put an implant or a bridge or something else in, and all you got to do is just do your restorative dentistry with orthodontics. Why? That's not taught. See? So let's get on here with this. I get hacked off just thinking about it. Now, all right, let's let's go on now to, set, to what the next uh, picture is. This is done in five of eighty-six, so we've gone from seventy-seven to five of eighty, five of eighty-six. I mean six of uh, uh, nineteen eighty-six, right here. These teeth are virtually lined up. 
Now this is where we extract our tooth. This root might move over here a little more. This one here, up above, I can't even see where the roots would be better. And we've not touched this with any orthodontic appliances at all, other than just using your head and going in and making room for the teeth to start with. Now let's look at it a little later, that's 86. Here it is in 1990, and the age of this young lady is now is 28 years old, and here are the teeth coming in. We had, there's no room for the wisdom tooth, and these were better, they were pretty good, so we didn't recommend removing that, but if we had, we could have moved the wisdom tooth up there. So we had to have the lower wisdom tooth out. We left the upper ones in there for the time being, and she might use them for spare tire later on down the line. All right, this tooth right here that has that defect in it, you can see it here. This has moved into this position with absolutely nothing but the tongue pressure on the inside and the lips from the outside. You can't do this with somebody that's breathing through their mouth all the time and their tongue's on the bottom arch. It's not doing its job pushing out there. It doesn't push the, the maxilla apart and they develop with an inadequate airway. And so we come in with palatal separators or enlarge the air space up above to restore this, which happen, should happen down here. Now the overbite and overjet, where this girl is chewing in here properly, breathing properly, everything's going good with it. And this is, she's 28 years old and this is I think the last uh, panorex I took on this young lady. And here, this is 1990, I think, on that now, age, well, 28. She's 28 years old. Here are the teeth. They're not perfect. All right, this is 77, and the teeth are still erupting together over here. Watch what happens. Now, this is that same defect. We put a filling in that thing, it seems like, or somebody did. And, now, and here it is in 86. This filling is discolored in here. But look where the teeth, look at this area over here. I'll back up. See that? Those teeth moved in on their own. We didn't do a blooming thing to them except just make sure she was breathing properly, functioning properly, and the mouth pushes the teeth out, the tongue pushes them out, and the lips and cheeks hold them back in if you're breathing through the nose. And this is the best retainer. She has not worn any retainer in any manner. What's holding these teeth in place is the natural lining up of the pressure from the inside and the pressure from the outside and the teeth are pushed into place. Nobody's teeth come in in exactly all like they ought to be. They may be sticking out this way or that way the lip pushes them in, the tongue catches them back here. Even these teeth down here, they would be turned and the tongue's pushing on one side and the lips catching on the other side and straighten the teeth out. I did not touch them uh, to do that. Now look at it here, it is 86, and that spot needs to be filled over again. And it's deep. Now I think somebody, well, no, that's back in 78, 77, uh, here, and I'll show you back from that side. Here it is in 1990. And it has been redone now, so you don't see that discoloration. There it is, 86, and the, that other one was 90. There's 86 and 90, and that tooth had a good, a better uh, filling in the front of it. Now you could, maybe you could say, 
if you see people that have had their teeth straightened and this many years after they're straightened, they look like this, that would be a very unusual case to do, do that. Because we don't know exactly what the inside pressure and the outside pressure is, or whether it's going to be there in the right way, and the teeth will be moved wherever this pressure is over a period of time. So this, this case has had no retainer, no orthodontic things, and this is the way it looks. Now this is 77, 77. You got some space up there, but you that that continue to close. And this is 86, this lateral's back here now, and the tongue is pushing on it to some extent. There it is in 90, that's not ideal there, that's not perfect. And down on the bottom, this these teeth that came in, you saw how they were, now look how they are. It's not perfect, we got a little gap here or there, but you show me people's teeth that have been straightened and had the best thing you could possibly do, and you look at them 15 or 20 years later and see what happens. Now this is 86, and this tooth is crowded up more down here, and it's still that way at 90. It looks pretty good over here on this side. And here is the facial structure of this young lady. The facial profile is kind of straight. It could be a little fuller, but that's the pressure that this young lady has. And her tongue is pushing this out, and the lip structure holds it back in there. And I don't know, this is not, she's not 28 years old in this picture. And there's the smile. We don't have a gumminess to the smile. The vertical dimension of the face is good. And this was done with no orthodontic appliances in her mouth at all. And why on earth this is not being taught in pediatric, they train in pediatric dentists. And I'd like to take the whoever's is in charge of the pediatric schools to come in and show them this. And this ought to be taught so that I want to hang up here in a minute. I think that's the end of the line. And I hope you watch our videos and I hope that somebody does something about this. And we, if you haven't learned it, it it's, they haven't taught you at pediatric school, go to the American Orthodontic Society and we darn sure will teach you how to do orthodontics. And so I uh, thank you for watching and I hope you'll pass this on to somebody else. And I'm going to go through a, two or three other serial extraction cases and the other problems that go along with anything like this. Thank you for watching and I'm going to hang up and say goodbye. I'm sorry, I'm kind of irritated with the uh, people that run the pediatric dentistry department in the schools all over this country. So I'm going to hang up and say goodbye.